Welcome. In this video, Tektran Devices will introduce its C-Switch eval board, as well as its many test features and uses. As I go through the features, I recommend you have a copy of the eval board pamphlet in front of you, or at least its schematic, which you'll find on page 2. Refer to the C-Switch detail page on our website, where you can download a copy of this pamphlet. Now looking down on the eval board, let's cover some of the important features which may help you conduct your laboratory test. As you may have already ascertained from the schematic, the eval board includes additional circuitry at the output of the C-switch to control your high voltage rail and relay coil directly. As you can see, the top edge of the board includes a series of right angle banana jacks to attach your patch cords directly to your lab low voltage and high voltage power supplies. This set of low voltage jacks is to make connections to your 5 volt DC bench supply and next to that are the jacks to connect your 12 volt DC or 26.5 volt DC bench supply to power the relay coil when activated. Some larger relays employ 26.5 volts DC. You can switch from 12 volts DC to 26.5 volts DC by using this jumper shunt here as marked. The C-switch control signal passes through a high current driver to activate the relay coils and can handle up to 10 amps. Over to the right here, we have a set of high voltage input and output jacks for connecting the output of your high voltage power source to your relay contacts and load. You can see how this is done by viewing that detail in our schematic here. You will also note if you are delivering more than 5 kil uh, kilovolts or 10 amps to the relay and the load under test, as, as the warning indicates, you will need to bypass these jacks provided and go directly to your relay contacts and load from your high voltage power source. The green fixed screw terminals here, here, and here are for connecting to your system controller, the remote low voltage control terminals on your high voltage power source and to the relay coil respectively. Again, your lab's high voltage supply should have a set of remote low voltage control terminals typically on the rear panel like these here. Refer to your manual. If you're using a DC to DC converter, it should have similar low voltage control terminals to gain control of your high voltage system rail. I won't take time to go over all of the optional controller connections here since they are clearly marked on both the board and in the schematic. Unless you're controlling turn on with your own controller, none of these connections are necessary to conduct tests with this board. You can simply use the manual latching toggle switch button here. We have two optional output terminals here to control your high voltage power source or rail. One delivers a positive output signal directly off a common ground circuit and the other delivers that low voltage output signal via an isolated high voltage optocoupler. You can set the type of low voltage control for your high voltage rail by using this jumper JP1 here. This board includes a number of optional control functions using various jumper shunts. This jumper delivers an input signal to the C-switch using either the manual switch marked S1 here or your system controller or microprocessor. This jumper determines whether your system's pore or power on reset is used, or the POR included on this board. JP4 here 
should be shunted unless fail-safe tests are being conducted. JP7 here is used when testing your system's relay select signal, otherwise it is set high. JP8 here is only used if you're testing a fail-safe signal from your controller, otherwise it is also set high. JP5 and JP6 here and here offer shunt settings for either the factory default RX RY resistors for a 3.5 second delay or your calculated RX RY resistor values. Note that you can only use a resistor substitution box for RX and RY if you leave the RXB and the RYB blank. Let's recap now by taking a look at the C-switch waveform algorithm again. For the RX make delay, be sure you include a safe margin for the relay specified operate delay time or until the relay contacts settle fully closed. If it's a few milliseconds, it may be wise to double or even triple that specified time. For the RY break delay, make sure you include the time required for the potential across your relay contacts to fully drain. You'll find in most cases your measured and calculated break delays will be much longer than the make delay. Remember to consider speeding up discharge of your system's filter caps if necessary by viewing our app note 1013. After you have taken your drain time measurements, use our software calculator to arrive at the RY resistor value. That should cover all of the key features on this board. If you have any questions or need assistance with your test, please contact our tech support. One point I should make regarding the eval board. As you look at this board, keep in mind much of the added circuitry here is not needed when employing the C-switch in your system. What you're looking at here is circuitry to support various tests. When actually using the C-switch, all you're going to need is a 5-volt DC supply, one input control signal from your system control board to set the algorithm in motion, the C-switch chip itself, and its socket. The C-switch will deliver two output signals, one to an optocoupler for your rail control, and the other to a driver circuit for your relay coil. Before we conclude this video, we should mention in addition to our C-switch eval board, we also offer this battery-powered C-switch demo board. This board is employed by sales reps for performing office demonstrations and was originally developed to service the needs of our international distributors. However, we mention it in this video only to let our customers know it is available if for some reason you need to perform field tests on the C-switch during system maintenance. Any further discussion regarding this use is beyond the scope of this video, but if you are interested, refer to its instruction pamphlet posted on our website for further details. You can purchase both the C-Switch eval board and our battery powered demo board by going to the e-commerce site on our order page or by contacting customer service at techtrandevices.com. If you need technical assistance setting up the eval board for your application, contact tech support. Thank you for taking the time to view our C-Switch eval board video. We hope you found it informative.